Hello everyone, welcome to the Jewish Week Online. I'm your host, Aaron Herman. Apps are transforming the way we learn. And within Jewish education, apps are a new way to enhance our Jewish lifestyle. Recently, Art School announced they are digitizing all their volumes with the help of Rusty Brick to bring Jewish education into the 21st century. Let's take a closer look. So, Jewish apps are the latest rage, and you've been in the business for a number of years. Tell us a little bit about how you got started. Sure. Uh, basically, when I first got the iPhone, they didn't support third-party apps, and I really thought, like, based on Apple's iPhone apps that they had when they came out with it for the first generation, we could build something that's unique and helpful for the Jewish community. And as soon as Apple announced um, the second generation iPhone, we jumped on that because they were the developers. And, sorry about that, and uh, when we opened it up for developers, it was, it was interesting because we were able to do things on the iPhone platform and iOS that you weren't able to do prior, like we were able to build out, you know, applications that are specific to the Jewish community that are not just, you know, books or, you know, flat books or static books, but it actually told you, it knew the day, knew your location, was able to actually tell you what you need to say that day um, based on where you are and what's going on that day. So we felt we could build a better Jewish companion um, using the iPhone technology. And, you know, you, you built a number of apps and they've been very successful. What are some of the things that you think have been, um, you know, the, the, the difficulties in, in bringing it to market and some of the opportunities? Um, so Ronnie could talk more on the technical side in terms of difficulties. Uh, it's, in terms of like the, I guess, the Jewish culture, it's a lot of people, especially the more, I guess, orthodox or more firm you are, um, the less they want to adopt new, techno adopt new technology, especially internet technologies, because um, it's just a, a device that could lead to certain things that are not appropriate. So that's one of the challenges. The other thing is, you know, it's awkward seeing somebody, not these days, but like when we first started, it's awkward, it's awkward to see somebody davening from their phone. It's like, why are they texting, why are they emailing, using their phone through Shul? And now it's like you see somebody in Shul with their phone in front of their face during Shul and S-Ray, it's not a big deal. It's something that you see a lot. Um, so that's changed over time. Um, Ronnie, do you want to talk a little bit about the technology side? Yeah, um, we started off really early in Apple. Um, has been working with us uh, through every single iOS version. And uh, the, the versions really had some challenges with uh, Hebrew. So first, uh, the first version of Sitter actually had a reverse, uh, you know, the Hebrew and things like that. And then we had issues with the correctness of uh, the various uh, vowel signs or the uh, things like that. So we had to, you know, evolve over time on the technology. A lot of things were not available uh, until, until literally we just got in the final changes that were on our major to-do list and that was like full screen mode and gestures and all that and things like this were not even capable, you know, four years ago. Uh, so we finally got all that stuff in, and, uh, and, and people are just so happy. It's, it's one of the best things about um, you know our audience is that they they're very vocal. They make sure to uh, let us know when we do things that are bad. And they make, make sure to let us know when we do things that are good, <laughs> and it shows up in the app review. I mean, if you look at any any of the Jewish apps um, in the app store, you'll see our Sitter app actually has five star rating. Um, and reviews. Two of them are very, uh, are very adaptive. People are very happy. So, this is and and one of the great things about you know your your app your apps is that you, you definitely have diverse types of, of apps, and I think that that's critical when you're trying to figure out your 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 segment. Um, and what 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 drives you? I mean, when, when you're when you're creating an app and you're trying to figure out like what's the next big thing, what how do you find? Obviously, it costs money to develop. A lot of I think a lot of people don't understand like you don't just 
you know, put some code in and, and, it, and it, uh, it just appears. It takes a lot of thought and it takes a lot of money to develop these type of things. Um, what, like, how do, you, how do you choose your projects to develop? Well, that's pretty much based off of what we, initially at least, it was based off of what we felt would be useful for ourselves. We build things that we find useful. And um, if it's not useful, we typically won't want to build it. And now it's more, now we've built pretty much almost everything that we've found to be useful. Like, like we have the sitter, we have, you know, the tikkun, we have all these different types of Jewish apps, like Shabbos Shalom tells you what time Shabbos is. We have apps that find the closest kosher restaurant, which was great when I went to, I was in San Jose this week and they opened a brand new kosher restaurant, so I was able to get there in no time. And, and So those type of things are very useful. Hmm. Now it's like little things that come up, like, Oh, on this day it would have been useful to have this type of feature, or that day it would be useful to have those types of features. Plus, because the, the community is so large now, everybody's getting iPhones and iOS devices, they're sending us tons and tons of feedback and saying, it'd be great if we had this, it'd be great if we had that. And based on the number of feedback, on the number of requests we get, that's how we prioritize stuff. Not just about features, obviously, it's about building out brand new apps. So, for example, like um, during the, the uh, nuclear reactor issue in Japan, like uh, about a year ago, maybe less. Um, we live in Muncie, which is not so far from the Indian uh, Point power plant, which is obviously a nuclear power plant right here. And we're like, why don't we build an app that you open up and tells you how far away you are from a nuclear power plant, and if you're in the red zone, and what to do in case there is uh, uh, a leakage of some sort. So that was like something we could throw out in you know a couple of days, and we did it, and so did a hundred other people do it. But it was something that we felt we found to be useful at the time, so we built it. Um, I mean, that's pretty much how we come about it. I mean, Ronnie, I don't know if you have anything to add. And other things, uh, for instance, uh, the Tikkun app um, was was a gamble. It was one of those apps that were very um, a, 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 it's a very very niche market it's for bar mitzvah kids and also for uh, for professional authorities. Uh, but uh, it was, it was a big investment, it was a lot of intense, uh, um, you know, capabilities, and we had to find a publisher that had a, a matching, you know, text in a high quality format that was adaptable to us. And it just worked out, everything worked out in that respect, and, and it's a very successful app right now. Um, so we're very happy with that. The next app probably would be, that we, we would try to test different markets, would be uh, our, um, our Olive Pit app. Um, and that, we designed and then did all the work and you know, stuff in-house. Um, you know, you mentioned budgets and stuff like that. It costs us a lot of money to actually output apps, especially kids' apps. And we were just testing to see how, how well the Jewish uh, the children's uh, app market would be. Uh, that's why we did the, uh, the Olive Pit app. And that's not, not, not doing so well, but, uh, you know, if I was showing it on the screen, um, you know, it's... It, the things didn't fall into place as well as we wanted to. Mm -hmm. so we try to get, you know, to team up with some people and, and some other people were not just didn't work out with regards to partnerships. So we had to do everything in house. And, and the number one complaint really is that we don't have an Israeli accent. So <laughs> we're gonna we're gonna work on getting an Israeli accent <laughs> on on the app. Everyone complains. There's, there's not. It's not. You try to create something innovative, and it's, it's not as you know how the Israeli accent. <laughs> That's how we that's how we yeah. answer yeah. these kind of put things. Right. Right. We'll, we'll, we'll put in both American and Italian <laughs> accents, and then make it an option for what you guys want to do. Right. Yeah. That will that will make everybody happy. Right. Yeah, I mean, expanding on what Ronnie's saying, especially in our sitter app, it's like there's so many different costumes, so many different, um, you know, so many different types of costumes and opinions and halachas and stuff like that, and so things like. Even do you say Hallel on Yom Mood or something like that? Um, we had to make a setting for it. And is it on or off by default? So we turn it off by default, and people yell at us, why is it off by default? Why, why is it on by default? I mean, there's lots, you can't make every single Jewish person happy. So we try to, like, the beauty of the sitter lets you say, all right, let's customize the sitter just for me and just for my preferences. And we're able to do that with literally probably have close to 50 settings there for all different types of things from. You know, different halachas of what you say on, on a certain day versus what zmanam you hold by. Um, pretty much everything you can imagine, like, you know, which way is Mizrach, there's like three different types of calculations, so it's pretty cool. And do you have a sense of how many downloads you've had, um, let's say, for all your, your, all your Jewish apps? Uh, 
It's a good question. Um, I would definitely say um, hundreds and hundreds of thousands, um, maybe millions. Um, yeah, we have over over three million sales alone in our in our own catalog of, of, of apps that we've produced. Um, but that that includes uh, uh, some non-Jewish apps as well. Mm-hmm. Uh, so but, uh, I, I would have to get more. Uh, right. And what's your most? Do you, do you know your most successful app? Oh, it's by far the Sitter. Um, oh. In regards to you know paid apps, uh, with regards to free apps, I think what is the Hebrew translator is doing pretty well. Um, the yeah, the free app in Jewish world, I think, is either the Shabbat Shalom app or the Hebrew translator app are probably the most downloaded free apps in the market in the Jewish world. In terms of the paid Jewish world, it's definitely our Sitter app, which is definitely the, one of the most downloaded paid apps we have. Mm-hmm. And you're, you recently got into a partnership with Art Scroll, and this is this is exciting. This is you know the the next level uh, of education. Tell us a little bit about this venture. So we've been talking to them on and off for the past um, at least two or three years now, um, and they've decided recently that they um, want to go ahead and take the leap and go into the digital space. The beauty of it is, you know, they have some of the best quality content out right. there. The way they lay it out has changed, you know, how people learn, you know, Gemara and everything, pretty much all Torah. And what we could do with their content to make it more accessible, to make it more interactive, to make it more, uh, you know, useful and helpful for students and, you know, even Daviomi people, it's just going to be, it's just going to be amazing by, you know, having side-by-side stuff, overlays, contextual mm-hmm. data that could actually make it more interactive and more useful. What they've done is an unbelievable thing in terms of the print, but we can, what, what we can do with them in terms of tech, uh, in terms of interactive technology on the iPad and iPhone, and even Android hopefully in the future, right. it's going to really change things. So we're really excited for that. As technology evolves, so does education. With Jewish apps, we'll be able to further our understanding of Jewish values, rituals, and history. This is Aaron Herman, and thanks for watching.